So in this video, I wanted to take a couple of minutes of your time to explain at least my interpretation of what the rubber man meant in American Horror Story Apocalypse and to also vent my frustration as to why, just in the long run, it's probably one of the worst things that this season actually did. So with that being said, let's jump right into it. Hey YouTubers, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell over by the subscriber button to notify you every single time I upload. So if you're like me, one of the coolest things about this past season was the second episode reintroduction of the rubber man for the american horror story fans this is probably one of if not the most iconic thing that the series has ever done it was a big mystery in the first season one of the biggest things about that first season and really with the connection between coven and murder house that was the first glimpse of the crossover that we ever got to see and it felt like it was going somewhere completely and utterly unexpected. We didn't know what to anticipate from those first couple of episodes. But as the series went on and we started getting more and more flashback episodes, I have to say not only did that scene fall flat of all the promise that it led up to in the second episode of American Horror Story, but at the same time, it's probably one of the worst things that this show has ever done. At least in my opinion, even after going back and looking at it the way I have in order to make this video, I have to say, I still don't like it. It was still just more of a lie than anything else to the audience to make us wonder what's going on, what's going to happen, and what this season's actually going to be about than it was just really building up story, building up characters, and allowing us to understand the world that they had put us in. So anyway, when it comes to the rubber man and what we got from the rest of the season, I have to say the rubber man never existed. It wasn't Tate, it wasn't Michael, it wasn't anybody else. What I think is Michael was just simply trying to mess with everyone in the outpost before he ended up killing them. And I'm wondering now, after we got to see the rest of the season, whether or not Michael's intention for everyone in the outpost and all the other outposts that he had taken out beforehand was to simply just erase their souls and be done with humanity first and foremost. It seems pretty clear with the introduction of Miss Mead and everything that he was going for was for complete and utter annihilation of the human race whether that was to get rid of the witches or just simply doing what he thought was right i'm not really sure but as we got to see throughout the season michael had a power to erase people's souls once they were actually dead and you couldn't bring them back of course they were able to bring back all the witches so maybe he didn't get around to doing that because after everybody died he ran into the witches right away and all the events took place like a couple minutes right after that with the last episode and Mallory going back in time but what I'm telling you is maybe his intention was and what he had been doing was simply wiping everybody out and all the souls around to make sure that the human race really couldn't rise up against him or just living out his own sick twisted fantasy of what he had decided his father wanted him to do. But with that being said, messing with everyone and allowing Mr. Gallant to see the rubber man. Personally, I think that this was really calling back and tied into Michael's wearing of the rubber man suit in episode six, the murder house crossover episode. This was showing us as a fan base that he had had a relationship with this costume before. He had used it to kill people before. And Michael was just simply using his increased powers as he got to the outpost to mess with everyone and making them see things that weren't really there. And maybe just even acting out their most aggressive habits in order to see whether or not they should survive or not. That's just my explanation here. The problem I have with it is that the majority of this season was built on flashbacks. And we got to see Michael growing up and becoming more and more powerful powerful as the season went on. But when you start the entire season in those first three episodes at the latest part of the story that you're trying to tell, you introduce a Michael that is all powerful and then you try to take us on the journey to show how he got that powerful. But the story stumbled not showing us how Michael got literally from point A with no power and not being able to take on the witches to being a Terminator as I said in my original review of the last episode. We didn't get to see him ever create these illusions in people's heads and make them see things that weren't there and manipulate them in that way or at least with that much power. So we are introduced to a Michael after the apocalypse that is stronger than any other Michael that we had seen thus far. In fact, the last thing that we had seen from Michael in the flashback episodes is him talking to the robot Miss Mead about meeting the cooperative people and being fearful that they might not accept him to that Terminator form of him with all of these powers able to manipulate people in such a way 
This is why that is the worst part of the entire show thus far, and I feel like it was just nothing more than to hype up the fan base and get us excited for a crossover with iconic imagery from the American Horror Story series without having any real substance or even thought behind it. So guys, what are your thoughts here? Do you think it was Michael just messing with people? Do you think it was someone else? What is your explanation for the rubber man? I hope everyone has had a fantastic day. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell over by the subscriber button to notify you every single time I upload. It's been real.